We help our clients with self-care and self-treatment. We are not doctors. I'm not going to prescribe something to someone. I'm going to give someone the information, help them understand potentially test results, their symptoms, what they seem to be showing, and then recommend I'm not prescribing ever supplements. I'm not prescribing protocols ever. It is This is a recommendation. We help you go through that treatment process that you are self-treating. That is the purpose of how we work with people, that it is a process that they are in control of because that is what it should be. So let's dive in to how the stomach works, because I think that a lot of people don't maybe fully understand the digestive system as a whole, and in particular, the stomach, because I think a lot of people, when they think of digestion, they think of the stomach, and that's it. And there is a lot more to it. And so we want to help people understand exactly how important this process is, why it is nuanced, the digestive cascade and chaos that can happen. So let's start with the stomach, because that's where obviously we're talking about stomach acid, it's gonna be the most pertinent (laughs) thing to understand. So the stomach is a muscular hollow organ. And it takes food in from the esophagus, which obviously gets from your mouth. And it's like a food pipe. And then your stomach mixes that food. It mixes it with, hopefully enough, stomach acid, breaks it down, and then it passes it to the small intestines in small portions. And the entire digestive system is made up of one muscular tube extending from the mouth to the anus. And the stomach is an enlarged pouch-like section of this digestive tube. I think of it like a tunnel. You shouldn't, if you're driving through a tunnel, things should not get in or out of that tunnel. That is what you want to think of when it comes to the digestive tube per se. Your stomach is located on the left side of the upper abdomen and it's shaped like an oversized comma and it's bulge pointing out to the left. The stomach shape and size obviously vary from person to person, depending on things like sex, build, but also how much they eat. Because yes, you can slightly increase the size of your stomach and shrink the size of your stomach. Mm -hmm. So at the point where the esophagus leads into the stomach, the digestive tube is usually kept shut by muscles of the esophagus and the diaphragm. Some people have a disorder and dysfunction, I should even say, of that muscle that kind of keeps that open and close happening, which is another story for another day. But when you swallow, these muscles relax and the lower end of the esophagus opens, allowing food to enter the stomach. If this mechanism does not work properly, acidic gastric juice might get into the esophagus, leading to heartburn or inflammation. And the main thing that we're going to hopefully help people understand today is that if you are having heartburn and inflammation, it is not always slash nearly ever because of too much stomach acid. It doesn't mean that you don't have stomach acid and that's not getting up and causing the heartburn, but that is not necessarily and usually not what is causing the heartburn. It's typically the lower esophageal sphincter that is not operating properly. And that's why people feel the sensation of heartburn or acid reflux because it's opening and closing when it shouldn't. It should only be opening when you swallow food. And just a fun fact, I was reading last week that it takes about four to six seconds for food once you swallow it to travel down your esophagus and then enter into the stomach through that lower esophageal uh, sphincter. So when I talk about slow down, chew your food well, four to six seconds, some people are swallowing their food, taking another bite, swallowing their food within that same time frame. Mm-hmm. And so again, it really matters how you eat if you want to reduce the stress that you place on the digestive system. Because again, we're talking about the stomach here, but digestion starts in your brain. When you start thinking about food, you start salivating for that grilled chicken salad that you brought with those sweet potato fries that you love that signaling from your brain starts to send saliva signals and digestive enzymes. You start salivating in the mouth. You're preparing then for mechanical digestion. When you start to chew your food, your teeth are your mechanics. And then you are relying on the chemical digestion in the stomach to help you further break that food down into what we know as chyme, as Becca was mentioning, and then it can move through the small intestine, the large intestine, and eventually, you know, end up with waste out of it. But I want to go back to one of the things that you were talking about, you know, in terms of where your stomach is. A lot of people say my stomach hurts and you're pointing like belly button or below, but your stomach is again, it's the upper left quadrant here under uh, like your rib cage. So up towards your diaphragm and it's usually filled with air that enters the stomach, you know, when you swallow. And so the largest part of your stomach, the body of your stomach is basically where you are churning and breaking down food into smaller pieces. So the chemical 
chemical reactions that we're talking about here is acidic gastric juices and digestive enzymes. Okay. And so as those exit the stomach, the body of the stomach narrows to form a canal basically. And this is where the partially digested food is passed into the small intestine in small portions. Okay. And when we talk about stomach acid, I think it's important to understand here that you also have the lining of your stomach. So your stomach wall, it's made of several layers, mucous membranes, connective tissue, blood vessels, nerves, muscle fibers, and the muscle layer alone has three different sub layers. Again, this is why it's very nuanced, right? When we're doing tough Testing for clients, we're looking at what is potentially happening even within some of these layers in terms of the mucous membrane, histamine response, things like that. Is the tissue uh, not tight the way that it should be? And are we experiencing leaky gut? And so what's the inflammation look like there? But basically, as the muscles of your stomach, they move the contents around, they're churning it vigorously, they're breaking down these solid particles of food that you have swallowed and grinding them and crushing them into chime, which is a very smooth like pulp. Think of it like a smoothie like consistency, okay? But the inner mucosal membrane, the lining of your stomach has large folds that are visible to the naked eye. And these folds run toward the exit of the stomach, providing kind of pathways along which fluids can quickly flow through the stomach. And so if you look at the mucosal membrane under a microscope, you'll see lots of tiny glands. And there's three different types of glands. These glands make up digestive enzyme, hydrochloric acid, aka stomach acid or HCL, what we're going to be referencing in these podcasts, mucus, and then bicarbonate which is a solution that will neutralize stomach acid. And so when we think about gastric juices, again, they're responsible for the chemical breakdown of your food. That's going to contain various digestive enzymes for protein, carbs, fats, all kinds of things, hydrochloric acid, and then other substances to help you absorb nutrients. So a fun fact here is we make about three to four liters of gastric juices per day if all things are functioning well. And the hydrochloric acid in the gastric juice is responsible for breaking down food and the digestive enzymes split up proteins, fats, turn them into fatty acids or amino acids. And the acidic gastric juice, so your stomach acid, is also responsible for killing off bacteria. It's really important that you understand stomach acid is vital to the digestive cascade. If we are turning it off or we're turning it down with PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, over-the-counter antacids or acid reducers, we basically put a block in the digestive uh, cascade at a very critical 